Hi, my name is Brandon Graisley. I teach high school computer science. My students have been working on an array-based linear integer storage data structure, and we've called it linear int store, and they've already implemented it. It has a bunch of methods in it, including things like uh, getting elements or inserting or removing elements, um, appending elements onto the end, that kind of thing. And uh, they've also recently started writing things like bubble sort, and uh, a selection sort and also now an insertion sort is what I would like added to that. And then we want to test and see which of these are effective under different circumstances. So to do that, uh, instead of under the source packages area, in, I've gone to the test packages folder in NetBeans in the project, I've created a testing package, and then in there I have a sorting efficiency.java file. And so just right click on here, new Java class. And I've added a main method to it, which is where all of our code is going to run. You notice the package is testing, it's not storage, and so that means we're going to have to import our linear int store from the storage package, storage.linear int store. Now it's available for us to use inside of this package. So what we're essentially going to do is we're going to create a big linear int store. We are going to uh, fill it with values in different, for different situations. And then we're, we're going to sort it using the different algorithms to see how long it takes. That's essentially what we're going to do. Now, the different kinds of values that we're going to be using, um, we are going to try a totally random list of values. We're going to have already sorted values. So we, what we'll essentially do there is we will sort it once, and then we'll use our sorted version. Oops, overshot there. We're going to use a reverse sorted data set. So we'll switch it around, run it backwards, so that the biggest thing is at the beginning instead of at the end, and then we'll have to resort the whole business. And then last, we're going to have a, a sort with few distinct values, where there aren't lots and lots of different values, but just a few, and see how that is affected by the different algorithms. Some algorithms are faster than others uh, when they discover a whole bunch, you know, a whole swath of values that are similar. So let's start off by creating uh, a big linear int store. Um, it doesn't have to be big at the beginning, actually. So the way we've implemented it, it just it is what it is. It is as large as it needs to be at the beginning, and then it will grow over time. So we will do that by making a linear int store. I'm just going to call it data. New linear int store is the only constructor that we have. It just makes a new blank one. And the one I've implemented starts with uh, eight empty spots in it. So it's definitely going to need to get a lot bigger. So we're going to make random values. Now, in order to have random values, we will need a random number generator. I'm just going to make one of those up here. Random r equals new random. And random is from the java.util.random class. So I just imported that up at the top as well. So now I have a random number generator, which I will use throughout. You only need to make one of these and then just use it a bunch. You don't need to make multiple random number generators. Okay, what else are we going to need? Uh, we're going to need a starting size or um, for this batch of, of uh, sort runs, we're going to need to know how big uh, do we want to go. So let's make that an int. We'll call it size and let's just begin at 10,000. That's a pretty good number to begin with. We'll see how long that takes on this computer. Okay, so now filling it with values, we'll start by filling with random values. So to do that, I'm going to use just a for loop. Uh, this will go up to 10,000 times. Oops, I++. Plus plus. So each time I want to append or add a new value to my data set. To do that, I'm going to call r.nextInt. Now you notice I did not put a number in here, like nextInt6 or something like that. If you leave the value out, you'll get a random number, a random int of all, that is from the list of all possible int values. So you can get negative numbers, positive numbers, really big numbers, really small numbers. Anything's possible here. So this is a totally random list of 10,000 items. And so we're ready to go like that. I'm just going to go through and show you the ways to get other list types before we go into how we're going to deal with this. So already sorted, we're just going to use the list that we just sorted from the random values. We don't need to make a new one. Okay, reverse sorted, what we'll do for that is we will sort of manually reverse 
the values in the previously sorted list. And I've actually written a method in my linear int store. I've added a new method called reverse array, which will take all of the values and switch them around for me. Uh, but you can figure out how to do that yourself. Uh, and last, a few distinct values. This one's a little bit maybe less intuitive. So what I mean here is that instead of having all possible int values, we're only going to have like a small number, like a hundred different values. And it doesn't matter how far apart those are. So what I will do, I'm just going to modify this by including the number 100 here. This will generate numbers between 0 and 99 inclusive. So the number 0 is possible and everything up to 99 is possible, but you don't you can't get 100 or negative 5 or a million or anything like that. So we'll have 100 unique values, but there are there are 10,000 spots. So that means we're going to have a lot of repetition here. So that's good. Okay, oh, I think I hit my formatting thing. Let's spread this back out again. Okay. So now what to do with this once we have um, created our list that we're going to need to sort. So how to sort. We're going to do uh, three things. We're going to get this current system time. We're going to run the sort. And then get the current time again. And subtract the starting time. So I'm going to make three new variables, uh, two new variables, I guess, up here. I'm going to make a long value that is going to be called start time. We're going to use it a bunch. And another long value called uh, total time, which is going to be uh, the end time minus the start time. And we'll use these a whole bunch of times. That's why I'm declaring them up at the top here. Okay, so let's get the current time. To do that, that's going to be start time is equal to system dot current time millis for milliseconds. And that method will grab a giant number that represents the current system time. Uh, it doesn't matter what that number really is as long as, uh, you know, a minute later, uh, it's going to be like 60,000 larger after 60,000 milliseconds. Then we're going to run the sort. Now, I'm going to do an example here. This, if I was doing a bubble sort, I would just do data dot bubble sort. That calls the bubble sort uh, algorithm, runs it on the current uh, linear int store that I've created right here. So that will sort that array. And then I will get the current system time again and subtract the start time from it and store that in total time. So let's say this number is like a million and this number here is like a million and five hundred. Then when I subtract, I will get the difference, which is 500 milliseconds. So that would be half of a second. Now all we have to do is sort of report that value on the screen. System dot out dot print line um, random values. Actually, maybe I can do one more thing here. Size random values took and we'll have some number of milliseconds total time milliseconds using, and in this case, I'm doing a bubble sort. I'm just going to write it in right here. If you want to get, uh, well, if you want to, I'm, for now, I'm just going to like write a bunch of code here. It would be more effective to, uh, instead of typing this out every time, to maybe make a little sub method, a private method that you can use to run this stuff. Um, okay, so that's what we're going to do. Let me just run this and see how we're doing so far. Oops, sorry. I'm going to, rather than running using that button, I'm just going to right click and run the file directly. This is not the file I want to be the default for the package. Okay, so 10,000 random values took 474 milliseconds using bubble sort. So that's one run. Let me run that again. Oh, I did it again. Right click, run file. 394. 336, 394. So I could run this several times, write down a list of, at least, say, at least three values, and then uh, take the average of all of those different run times. Because you can see, like, this one was 640. That's not really representative. Most of the time it was in the, the mid to high 300 milliseconds. So that is a single 
kind of test random values using a single sort, the bubble sort. I'd like you to try already sorted data now. Like you can use the, the data, the list that we've already sorted. It's already sorted. So I can just kind of grab this stuff here. If I'm brute forcing this, I'll just copy and paste that. Exactly the same code runs here. The only thing different is 10,000 sorted values took how long? Now when I run this, uh, I did it again. Now when I run this, okay, the random values took 484 milliseconds. The sorted values did not take as long. Now you're going to need to try this a few times and see if that's always the case with bubble sort or if this was just a kind of a fluke or an accident. Okay, so try it out with a bunch of different, uh, the three different sorts with the four different situations each. And I'm just going to scroll up here. To try something larger, you just increase this number. So let's say 20,000. Ah, I did it again. 20,000 will take, let's see. Mm, it's a little bit longer. Okay, quite a bit longer. Maybe it does not just double the amount of time that it takes. So that's the task. Try it out. And of course, if you need to get a hold of me, you know how. I'm always happy to help. And this is the kind of thing where you are, feel free to ask for help. You don't need to do this all on your own. If you get stuck on something, uh, reach out and I will uh, help get you past any problems that you're having. Okay, thanks a lot.